Crackcast News is back. Welcome, everybody. We've got a lot to talk about this week. Wow, Josh is here, uh, Dave is here, and Dr. Mike is here. We and actually I'm just John. lost a couple what? of minutes of audio, people, and I have to tell you something. Richard came for so so lucky. Lucky. <laughs> 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 Try not to interrupt John when he's. What uh, the hell are we, that was? That was worse than the, than the first yeah. version we just cut a second ago. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll try to get this back on track. If you're listening, just I, I'm sorry for that. Just bear with us here. That all makes sense. Maybe yeah, I thought we were just talking about hamsters. Okay, people, we, relax. Oh my god, it's getting worse. Um, we uh, we're starting our show with uh, <laughs> hamsters. Talk of hamsters. <laughs> yeah, let me explain. <laughs> Let, let me explain. Let me I, explain. I feel like I should clarify the, yeah, before John goes on and flustered him. Uh, you know, we, we were recording and had an audio issue and we had to stop. And during the hamster piece, uh, one of the uh, cast members <laughs> said something about Richard Gere, which I'd never Guess heard who? before. <laughs> and I'm still reeling in shock from his uh, supposedly naughty dally. I was going to say with, uh, the rodent, uh, and I imagine some of you listening will, will know about the Richard Gere hamster reference. The other 99% of you now, I can think I go will to uh, block the uh, motorway, the infrastructure development? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Okay, here's have a news story. All right, give me like thirty seconds at least of, of interruption-free time here. Okay, here's the thing. Go. There's Very a huge inter- infrastructure project going on in Krakow now, regarding or connected to the, uh, the, the 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 ring road, the bypass. If you're driving east-west on the autostrada, it will allow you to go around the center of town <laughs> and save some time. Right. Oh, uh, Richard. So, right now, shut up. That wasn't even 30 seconds. So, right now, uh, there is a connection between the A4 and Nova Huta. This is the new bridge, really nice. And it stops uh, right at um, uh, Yana Pavla, uh, the, the, the street. So, the idea is to keep taking it further north through a small place called Batovica, kind of circling around to the northwest, and connect to the A7, which is the main road to Warsaw. But we learned this week that uh, the European hamster, whatever that is, the European hamster has been found in this area, and for reasons that are not entirely clear, it's a protected animal, uh, which means that the work has to come to a stop while we do an environmental impact statement. Guys, where do we even start on this? First of all, when, when I hear something like European hamster, I'm, just, I'm wondering, is this a, a Monty Python skit I haven't heard of or something like that? Uh, but no, it's ridiculous. You have this uh, animal protection group, which has basically declared that they found several burrows of the European hamster in this area, and they're claiming that the companies that are involved with building this freeway, this highway, uh, didn't do a proper survey beforehand, and now they're going to kill off this hamster, and they need to bring in changes. Otherwise, they're going to block this construction this, and European funds. This is the amazing thing. They're not actually trying to block a future plan with this. They're trying to stop a motorway that's half built. I mean, it's absolutely madness like come on these laws all over Europe sorry to interrupt you Mike this pisses me off so much I mean Europe needs big infrastructure we need to keep up with like China you know where they don't have to follow uh, property laws you know we, we need to be dynamic when we build and uh, it's it, ridiculous to block a motorway yeah, they, they, don't, they don't care in China they don't care if people are blocking the road they just build right <laughs> past it uh, the thing is, what they don't even under, uh, what isn't mentioned that often is these new highways infrastructure sh- uh, developments already take in consideration animals. So they have like underground passages and pathways for exactly. animals. Mm-hmm. But this group is saying, no, no, there have to be specific pathways, long, thin, and narrow pathways, especially designed for small uh, rodents and these hamsters. What the hell? So, uh, so oh, you have to have specific ones for each and every type of animal and shape and size. I'm pretty sure that you know, crazy. if a deer can go underneath it, then so can a hamster. Well, look, I mean, I've, I've, you know, it seems to me that there is a very, very, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, eminently suitable solution to this problem, which actually kind of kills two birds with one stone, if you'll excuse the more animals mixed metaphor. And that is, you know, I think anyone who knows anything about hamsters know that they really enjoy spending their free time on a little exercise wheel in their cage. So my thinking <laughs> is true. this. Why not either side of this motorway, rather than kind of Serious you know go into the um, you know the inordinate expense of building special kind of like hamster safe zones for them to you know cross the motorway underneath or whatever? Is just set up a whole like kind of like rampart of exercise wheels on each side, which yeah. can then be connected to some kind of generation so we, facility. We, it's the energy crisis, so too. that the yeah. hamsters can exercise themselves to their heart content and oh. power the street lighting. I see your two birds it's the in the one stone green now. Deal from It's yeah. the new green deal. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the weird thing. Let me add one more layer of strangeness to this oh, whole actually, thing. Oh, anyone know what, what hamsters taste like? I mean, 
I mean, uh, you know, because if they're if they're a food resource, then sure you know, some cultures do eat hamsters. Are those gerbils um, in uh, South America? They eat, they eat uh, guinea pigs. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. They're not very tasty. Or wild yeah. animals. They said they were born in pet shops. Well, that's the thing. That's the, that's the layer of strangeness I want to add to this. As far as I know, and anybody listening, feel free to correct me on this. But as far as I know, hamsters come from the Middle East, from what is today like Syria, maybe Jordan, somewhere in there. And they only kind of showed up in Europe and in America and maybe 60, 70 years ago as, as a pet. They're an easy, safe pet for kids. This is not a native species, right? And so the idea of a European hamster is weird to me, so much, I was right. much less Alan, one that requires legal protection. I was right. They, you know, they escape from pet shops. That's how they, Basically. they exist. Oh, my God. I was right about that. And now we're going to stop a multi-billion euro road project for them? What? No, we're not. Come uh, on. Of course, that's not going to happen. Are there crocodiles in Poland? Let's be clear. It's not, it's not going to stop the road. I mean, let's be real. Well, it'll. They have to pause it. They'll do whatever environmental it'll, it'll get impact some bad statement press they have to have do. Some yeah. whiny kids on TV crying about hamsters. Josh, tell us about the uh, legislation madness that is bat preservation. Uh, I mean, we have this in Ireland as well. But I mean, isn't it the case that in the UK and Ireland, any old building that has a bat that has flown within ten miles of it in the last hundred years, bats? basically, and bats are like this amazingly protected species in the UK. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, if there's. <laughs> Actually, I think it applies in this country as well. I think there's, if a, there's lot a bat it, legislation across you know, the yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Pretty baddie. I, mean, I, I don't I do, even know I, where to go I mean, from I, that. You know, famously remember that um, you know that you have to oil bats in winter, otherwise they split. Oh no, sorry, that's cricket bats. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you are informed today, Josh. Informed. Uh, well, there's no uh, really good transition or segue I can think of to, <laughs> to go from hamsters to anything else, really. So let's just Except do it the hard way. Actors, let's yeah. just do it the hard way and go straight into... Uh, uh, Richard. Oh, actually, there is a connection here. More, in, more infrastructure projects, our favorite subject. Uh, from one big one on, on hold because of hamsters to a, a smaller local one here. You know the new trams we got in Krakow? When did the first ones appear? How many years ago was that? The f- actually, there is a link because because uh, hamster is an anagram of she-tram. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. I don't care what anyone says. All right. Yeah, I'll <laughs> That's give you that. That's the best anagram joke I've heard this week. I think grammatically, though, in <laughs> Polish, tram more. is male. So I guess it, I don't know if... Anyway, when, when did the first new, uh, the tram show up, uh, Dr. Mike? The blue one. He trams. It's called the, dam, the Bombardier. The, called. Well, actually, before the Bombardier, in about 99, 2000, you've got those first like modern-style trams. Before then, you had the Akfadia and the Nuremberg tr- tr- uh, trams before that. Oh, you know your trams. Uh, well... <laughs> I know my trams. The Nuremberg trams. Oh, it's so many jokes in there. But let's just skip that, too. Okay, and the Bombardier? And the, uh, the Bombardier showed up, I think, around 2004, 2005. Has it been that long? What? Somewhere. I, it yeah, goes really be, long. They're like 40 meters long, oh, those? those? No, the ones, Krakowiak the ones are more they're recent. They're like yeah. two years. Oh, I thought, long, that two, was the I thought that was the Bombardier. You know, Bombardier is like a whole company. A few lines, other tra- a few lines had them by like 07, definitely. Yeah. 06, two years uh, sounds like too recently. I'm thinking like five or six years, miss. No, the super uh, long ones where it's like several hundred people in there or something. Like that. That's, it's two, three years. It's actually, maybe you're right, because they did. there was there were stories not too long ago about how they had to refit some of the tram stops to accommodate them. And Yeah, that they couldn't make a tight turn or something like that. Well, anyway, the trams are back in the news because the, the city government, Dr. Mike, says they uh, as many new trams as we've have, as we've added to the roads over the last few years, they want more, a lot uh, more. Can I just say, when you get on one of these trams, it's like getting on the Starship Enterprise. It's deadly. I love them. You know, <laughs> all right, maybe not. Starship. You look for the captain's I chair. I pitched it slightly. It's like when, getting on when a nice the, modern when tram. When the air conditioning is on. nibbling on his when the air conditioning, on, air conditioning is on, on and it's 30 degrees out and you step on the 50 yes. and you go through the tunnel and you pop out underneath yes. Galeria Krakowska and you walk straight up and you go, you know what? Somebody had to think about that. That worked well. So, Dr. Mike, what about the new trams? Well, uh, the city has asked, uh, started a bidding war for uh, 60 new trams. They're offering about 550 million zlotis for that. But only one con- uh, one company has actually handed over a Not bid. much of a bidding war. Yeah. Uh, and they want for that same amount of trams, so 60 trams, they're saying s- about 620 million zlotis. Now, so. let's be clear, gentlemen. Stadler are hardly some kind of fly-by-night organization who are going to go missing on the country. I think their only reasonable competitor is Waldorf. Exactly. <laughs> and Bombardier, but you know, the um, I, I'm sure you were making a joke, I didn't understand that, right? Waldorf and Statler, it's a uh, Sesame Street kind of thing. Uh, Muppet Show, Muppet Show, sorry, yeah, they got really showing my age. I could wow. feel so, <laughs> I didn't get the joke, but it just felt so, so many layers over my head. It's like we're making a show for ourselves, well, not for people Muppet who are listening to your us. Head. Yeah. <laughs> I, d- I just didn't get the right. Anyway, guys, back to the trams, which you might recall is the subject of the segment. Uh, 
is it the timing on this weird? Didn't we just hear a couple of weeks ago that the city, the Impeca, the, the, the transit John. authority has some massive uh, budget hole, and now John, we're going to spend six hundred million more? Let's be clear; they're very close to finishing this job. This construction site Josh is currently living in is going to be finished one day, and what we're going to be left with is a legacy of great trams. A legacy. We'll all look back and remember about how great it used to be. Uh, well, the city has said over years that they want to replace their entire fleet exactly. with modern trams. Yeah, but do we have to do the whole thing in, in the space of five or six years? Yes, we do. I don't know. Well, they want they want to have a uniform, more or less. And modern then we're fleet. gonna build an underground, John. And all the tra- <laughs> <laughs> as soon as this is done, God. several billion. Where are we on the underground thing? It's not good. We're waiting for some kind of impact study to be done, or some kind of a few always... million zlotas went for some people yeah. to sit around on their asses and make shit up yeah, to make, a, make a, a website or something. We're gonna have like a that. dig on that and do it. Been making exploratory burrows and discovered a, 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 an endangered. Yeah, the species. European <laughs> hamster is in the middle of town too. <laughs> for, new, moles, yeah. for new listeners, we should explain there is a plan in the pipeline to uh, do a feasibility study for an underground network, which we program. hope never happens. It well, some of us hope. Some of us hope never happens. If hamsters have some kind of like you know civil administrative setup, is it is it known as as a Oh my God, Josh, you're on a roll tonight, baby. What is, what is it known as? As like, you know, the, the borough council. <laughs> <laughs> Again, for the other 99% of you listening who didn't get that, we'll just... Uh, if this is your first episode, please. I have to be borough, honest. Stay, borough, stick yeah, on. Stick, uh, stick, uh, stick it out. He just makes me hey, Back to trams. Remember uh, like 15 years ago when you'd see a lot of advertisements on trams? The new trams don't take advertisements. They're not built for it, are they? Uh, yeah, the, the outside is a lot more difficult. Plus, the city's. I been... like the ones with ads. They were nice and colorful. I like the, 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 the uh, nice regal blue that they have going on. It I is like nice. That. That's the official. Yeah, that's color the city colors. Yeah, Chicago. like a lot of major cities in Poland have. That matters to people, by screens. the way. Buses are green in in Dublin. Buses are red in in London. You know, like, I mean, well, this shit matters. Yeah, in Poznan, I think they're green and yellow. In Warsaw, they're red, red, yellow. Yeah, red and yellow. Yeah. I think they're yellow in Katowice, but I'm not 100 percent sure. And have you yeah. been to Łódź? In Łódź, their trams are still in like 1980. They are ancient, embarrassing yeah, but, uh, trams. Uh, oh, embarrassing trams. And every time the city budget comes up to modernize ours, you start bitching. You can't have a boat. Yeah, ways, but the John. ones we have here aren't that old. In Wooj, they're like, oh my God, I don't know what Exactly. The they make you there. embarrassed for Wooj. We don't want to be Wooch. No, no. Wooch. However you say well, it. Well, I remember taking a tram in Lviv, actually, and they were, they were pedestrians overtaking it. <laughs> yeah. They were almost like horse drawn uh, trams, weren't hop they? Hop on, hop off, and please push. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, just. To end on a good note on this story, the city is demanding that like, these trams, of course, have modern infrastructure, so air conditioning, USB ports Which for charging. Which the drivers won't turn on unless there's a, you know, anyway, sorry. Uh, USB charging points, uh, interactive systems yeah, to really give information. All uh, well, all these new trams have to have all these can I draw, amenities as can well. Can I draw our listeners' attention to something, actually, now that we're talking about? I'm not sure if I brought this up in the show before. There are a number of trams in Krakow that have um, what look like contactless payment hubs at the bottom, but are still cash machines. Maybe the software hasn't been... Uh, maybe anyone can provide any light on that. Why you would possibly put in place the physical thing before it's ready. Oh, so it's like they're fitted for it, but yeah. the software isn't there. You can't use it. And every yeah. time I'm on yeah. um, the 50, I see confused tourists try and pay with a contactless card to buy a ticket, not realizing that it's impossible. But isn't that... Because I'm not sure, but isn't that for the Karta Krakowska? I, I don't know, but doesn't it work with... I don't like, think you no. have to... To swipe the Karta Krakowska like ever, do you? No. I, I don't think that, that is your get, ticket. If somebody gets on, uh, yeah. an inspector gets on, he beeps your card. That's why. But that's what these, these trams cost God knows how much money, and they're not fitted with at least two uh, credit card machines. Come on, they should be, right? Oh, geez. You're never fucking happy, are you? Well, because I have the same problem sometimes. I, I don't carry a lot of cash, and I need to get a ticket. <laughs> And maybe maybe it's fitted for the contactless card. Maybe it Look, isn't. Look, I will admit it's happened to me once or twice. You're on a tram, and you know you, you realize that you want to pay, and you, you're like twenty cents short of a ticket. Right. And it would be nice. <laughs> oh, I think there's a few of us who are twenty cents things. For twenty cents short of a ticket. For years, you've been able to pay with credit cards at nearly every proper um, bus stop and tram stop. Well, the other thing is you have that like that Sky Cash app on your phone, and then you just buy a ticket using. Yeah, that. I mean, come on, yeah, you got to give true. crack yeah. of great credit for that's, this. That's fair point. Yeah. Let's move on. A uh, really interesting, um, oh, kind of like a survey out this week, uh, Dr. Mike, that uh, that revealed some interesting things about what the Polish voting public, anyway, is uh, concerned about. Uh, we'll, we'll jump into their kind of questionable, questionable methodology in a minute. But first, tell us who conducted the survey and uh, what questions people were asked. Well, it was done by Ispos, which is basically a, a polling, like, uh, pollsters. But they were asked to do this on behalf of Okopress, which is a media source, media outlet. 
they're more or less left leaning, though they claim to be like most independent fact checkers. But you have to remember that you had some journalists and some uh, uh, media personalities set this up together with money and funding from the Borza and from. Uh, right, I forgot what the other source was. Hold on a second. Well, Verborcha was the main one. Verborcha was the main one, and then another... Which is hardly, I mean, come on, let's uh, be honest. Agora, there we go, and Agora. Uh, uh, they helped start what, up... Doesn't this. Agora own Verborcha? Yeah, but you know how these, they're like also separate entities, and they each were a separate like uh, oh, okay. entities. Well, but they're hardly things. middle of the political spectrum. Yeah, come and on. you know, they created Press, which basically does surveys and uh, uh, it does fact checking to fact check to make sure whatever's in Viborza is, pro- uh, is true. Plus, they write articles and put stuff out there online that then Agora and Viborza can cite to start their yeah. own thing. So, you know, it's kind of well, a I think kind of their, their niche, their thing is to kind of like, you know, uh, the po- finger on the pulse of the public opinion. And that kind of thing, it's especially now in an in election like, season. I mean, you, you take this so far, uh, you know, like, I mean, you ever seen that guy, uh, Frank Luntz, that goes around, uh, the American guy? Yeah, uh, Polster. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you watch him in action and you see how much of an art it is, actually, you know, putting your pulse on what people think and really building models and kind of working with data scientists and really trying to get an impression. But that's election polling. When you start broadening it out to every topic under the sun, you know, you stick a microphone in someone's face and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I mean, if somebody hasn't had to think about it, you know, maybe they're just saying something. So what were the questions people were asked here? Basically, the question they presented to uh, to people was, which of these list of issues, which two do you consider the most important or the ones you're most concerned about? And the issues were, for instance, the climate crisis, as they deem to call it, Mm -hmm. Uh, the economic crisis, the demographic crisis, uh, health Healthcare crisis, uh, LGBT, but gender issues. But you have to give an answer. That's what you think, right? If you agree to take a poll uh, and someone says to you, you don't know what question's coming at you, and someone says that to you, and you don't genuinely have even two things you're concerned about, you're a happy human being, but you're asked the question, what do you fear? And you kind of reach in there and you go, well, I don't really fear it. And we woke up this morning, it was grand. Okay, uh, climate change scares me from a kid's future. It's just something fucking people say. It's, like, you know, it's, it's the right a, answer. Yeah. It's the right answer, you know. And that's what I'm saying. Poland is, is, is an art, you know. The whole uh, sphere of, um, of this, it, it bothers me. It bothers me how much stock we put in. Uh, well, sorry, these, these answers these were kind of fed to the people. That, you know, they, were, they were saying, in other words, you have to how choose, choose, the questions is massive. choose from these answers. That was the format, Plus, right? You know, the <laughs> funny thing is like you could be concerned about all these issues but when you're like forced to name two you might at that moment arbitrarily okay so what, what came out on top what were the top uh, uh, oh the that's another thing the uh oco press decided to present only part of this data i couldn't actually find the raw data i'm hoping it's out there somewhere but they basically broke it down mainly to the 18 to 39 year old age demographic they broke it between genders uh and if, this article also mentions that they mean genders in the biological sex sense and not genders and is in the self-identifying yeah, Exactly. What Thanks for clearing of? that up. What are you yeah. afraid of? I'm just of? trying to let you know what kind of website this is. No, I'm asking. I'm genuinely asking and turning the question on you. If I stuck it, Paul, mm. but we still want to know what, what came out on top, though. What are we afraid of? Can we get to that? No. First, please. Just saying what I mean. I'm just illustrating what a meaningless question. Yeah. Is. Well, the, first of all, they don't say what you, when they ask, like, what are you, what are you, what are you concerned about, or what are you afraid of? They don't really define these issues exactly. as well. So, uh, yeah, what is more important, the state of the climate or where your next meal is coming from? Uh, yeah, it depends on you know if you're talking about the, the next two days, the next in your next meal. When you're thinking a hundred years, then you're talking about these environmental issues as well. Uh, and they presented these questions, and this article then breaks it down in a way that obviously tries to make men look bad and anybody who votes uh, peace look bad. So, uh, Dave, you have the stats there in front of you. Could you? Uh... Okay, okay. You know what? I'll give you the stats. I've got them right here in front of me. Here's the thing. Um, the question is: the question was phrased like this: Which of the following nine phenomena? So they gave them choices to, to to select from. Which of the following nine do you consider to be the most serious threats to Poland in the 21st century? Most serious threats. The number one, that number in, one, indicated by almost forty percent of the people, thirty-eight uh, percent, climate change. Now, I think we just said that for a lot of people, that seems to be the correct answer. Do I find it hard to believe that forty percent of people really go around living their day-to-day lives worried about climate change? 
I, you're right. It's one of those things that people think they're supposed to say. Plus, when you think about, they have all these things to choose from, and they that's just under 40%. I don't think it's that much. Plus, uh, also, this is something I was whining about the methodology here. They only called a little bit over a 1,000 people, while the range of questions and topics here was very broad. And then mm-hmm. they broke it down to a lot of separate True. demographics. We've which, already said it's ridiculous. I don't know why we're reading out the list. We're just endorsing this bullshit. Number two on the list. Uh, again, the second biggest threat facing Poland of the 21st century. Number two! Uh... Gender and LGBT ideology. Oh, seriously? That is the most second most important. Now, hmm, now, this is you know, this is these are all very so political people questions. Are obviously, afraid. Now, are, are we are we looking at just a, a, a typical um, stereotype of peace voters? You know, popular among PO people. We're looking to or get is there through something this list this? quickly, John. No, Maybe no, they're no, just afraid that the weather's going to get so hot that you're just going to be see a bunch of gay guys walking around with like assless chaps. We got some shocking news Thanks about IKEA for, the, uh, for our listeners, there. John. We got to get to this. We got to get to third this biggest. Shocking let me give you third stuff. biggest one. The 19 percent of people say they're afraid that Poland will leave the European Union. That's not even an issue. That's nobody wants in Poland wants to leave the EU. There are a lot of people that are skeptical uh, when it comes to the EU, but it's more about they want to change institutions while being in the EU. Yeah, and it's, more, leave it, it's the, more that they absolutely know that they cannot be kicked out of the EU, so they can say what they like about the true. EU. It's absolutely the opposite. And just to quickly run down the, the also-rans at the bottom of the list here, there's the, uh, the crisis in the health service, uh, the nationalist movement in Poland, the demographic crisis in Poland, which I would have voted for higher than, than it came in on the final results. Do you know what? Worrying about demographics is just ridiculous. Yeah, but it's more of a legitimate concern you know, uh, than some of the other have, things on the list. Smart space. people have been telling us about how, you know, Japan is doomed, doomed since the 80s because of its aging population. Last time I checked, you know, Japan's doing okay. True. Did you say Asian population or aging population? Aging, aging, aging. Yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Demographic right. crisis, uh, political conflict, uh, threats from Russia. Ah, oh, yes. Quick comment yes. on this. Broad, kind of, because do you mean like actual military threats or economic threats or political threats? Well, pick one. Uh, I think all three are legitimate, and I would have put it higher on the list than that, but I also would have <laughs> what, 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 Economic, what you mean? The, the market being flooded with cheap Russian knockoff goods? I, yeah. Dave, we so. talked Russian before. knockoff goods. When, <laughs> when did they ever bother making knockoff goods? Dave, we no, talked no, before it's a, it's about a company how called knockoff. In, oh. uh, in Poland... Um, I wasn't uh, as the, the start the, that I have to be honest. The threat from Russia is often ridiculously overstated, but at the same time, you can make the argument that it's, it's maybe a little bit justified. Where do you fall on the, the, the legitimacy of the Polish reaction to the threat from Russia? How do we get onto this? Well, because it was at the, the bottom of the list. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. I Googled something on my phone there. I, was, uh, I wasn't really listening to you there for a second. As I said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> unlike our listeners, I hope. Well, no, I did say I found the list ridiculous, so I kind of zoned out a little bit. Um, so what are we talking about? <laughs> We're basically making fun of the list, bottom of the list. The the, the uh, some like eight, ten, twelve percent of people said they were afraid of a threat from Russia to Poland. And I said to you, um, we've talked before on the show about how it's easy to make fun of how Poles pr- probably overreact to I legitimate threats, but I, at the same time, maybe there's a case to be made. I think I've made clear. I have not much got not got much time for the current government, but I absolutely support their uh, defense spending plans. I think you absolutely must take care of your own security, your own borders, and if you were to weigh up. John, any security threat that potentially could affect Poland, surely you'd have to factor in Russia. Yeah, um, but still, I, I kind of I kind of believe that like the, the, the polls kind of overreact to legitimate threats from Russia. Doesn't That's what really I like you getting onto that subject, does he? Well, considering you know uh, George, Georgia, and then considering the Ukraine, I think polls do feel a little bit antsy having this neighbor. John wants us to calm down, though, mm-hmm. Michael. No, I mean, but I, I, the way they qu- uh, phrase this in this survey as well makes it sound like they're about to roll the tanks in. But this is just more about a nation which w- with which we have a few competitive issues and some disagreements on a national. Uh, a little bit of history. And dignify this list, this ridiculous survey, by having an intelligent discussion about Polish-Russian relations. Yeah, Let's move what's on the, what's the, next. the next item on the list? Yeah. The ridiculous the next item on our, our story list. Sorry. Let's get off this. Sorry, the ridiculous list that Dave insisted on including on today's show. Yeah, only because we were a bit short of items. I didn't know you'd linger on it for uh, so lovingly and tenderly. There was so much to talk oh, about. Should, I, should, I thought we'd talk about how so ridiculous the list about. was. I didn't think we'd read it all out. Oh, they also broke it down by gender here, and it turned out that women were more uh, concerned about the climate crisis and the healthcare system. In Poland. Don't which, care, don't care, don't well, care. For men, it was gender, <laughs> LGBT ideology. Especially moving on, at last. Oh my God, moving on at last. 
So the last couple of days, I'm sure you've noticed in the morning and in the evening, a nice chill in the air. Summer is definitely, oh, definitely so gone. Nice. Yes, if you're listening to this, summer just you know ended like uh, like literally fun. like 12 hours ago or something it's like that. So nice at the moment. But uh, one of the signs that uh, the seasons are definitely changing is when the heat is turned on in the city. The city heating system is kind of switched on. It's a big deal, uh, Doctor Mike. There are some rules that the city has to follow when they determine exactly when the big day comes. It's basically there has to be a certain amount of uh, cold days in a row or cold nights, like below a certain temperature. I think it's like below twelve degrees yeah, or even I think it's twelve or thirteen. Yeah. And then they, it's the, just like the heating in the trams. Only when it's been cold for a certain amount of days do they turn the heating on in, on on in trams and public communicate uh, transit. And they do the same thing when it comes with uh, central heating in the city. And central heating is maybe something that a lot of listeners have never heard about. But basically, in Poland and a lot of other countries, uh, the city actually provides heat to households. Uh, through t- uh, uh, sending hot water to these buildings. It's not hot water that you actually wash with, but it's hot water that gets pumped into your the basement of your t- uh, tenant building, of your apartment building, and then gets, you know... Uh, Shared municipal uh, schemes like this fascinate me. Mostly I we're mean, talking, the scale of this is phenomenal. John, give, give our listeners an impression of what this looks mostly like. Mostly we're talking, you know, your, your post-war blocks, pretty much, you know, 90% of your... St- what are they called? Uh, puta? What's it called, Mike? The Puta construction? Uh, Vielka Puta. So Vielka Puta them. construction. Um, your your newer um, uh, apartments apartments built in the last three, five, seven years mostly have their own boilers in the, in the yeah. basement. But uh, your older buildings, again, probably up until the mid-90s are connected to the city network. Um, if you live here in Krakow, you you might know or you probably know there's an area called Wang. Wang, it's just uh, east of uh, Imjeden um, on the edge of Novohuta. And even if you've never been there, you can see it from a distance. There are two towers, cooling towers. They look like nuclear reactors, but they're, they're not. They're kind of miniature versions of a proper it's nuclear reactor. Nuclear. One of them one of them is painted with like a, a silly kind of sky and cloud motif. The other one is not painted. I don't know why. Anyway, people always think that's a nuclear power plant. Well, it, it's, it, it's not. It's the city heating plant. And what they do is they like super, super blast uh, this this uh, the water somehow it's distributed through the network now how what it temperature does the super super blast it's like steam super blast. it's essentially steam well, what gives it the double super what I have no idea again anybody listening who knows the technical aspect of this better than I do which is most of you maybe I'm just busting your balls you do feel, feel free to write in and let us know but um, well, the only way that you can get water above 100 degrees centigrade is by pressurizing it pressurizing yeah so and that is a nuclear power plant it then. somehow maintains its temperature as it makes its way throughout the city I mean you know as I said this facility is you know, just east of the center of town. And, you know, by the time it gets to the south side of town in Kurdvanov and Biazhanov and the west side of town in Branovica, it's still piping, piping hot. So I don't know how they maintain this temperature, but it, they do somehow. That's where all the city heating comes from. Well, all the heating goes underground, which, you know, provides a lot of insulation. Yeah. You do have those few places where it comes out, then that's, you know, where the homeless people get together. The steam vents, yeah. Uh, but basically, it's kept in large insulator pipes underground, and they actually built up the network a lot in the last couple of years, in part due to them wanting to limit the amount of people having their own little coal furnaces at home. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I just said I have no idea how it works, and then Mike explains in 10 seconds how it works. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you use the expression piping hot, which I thought was quite amusing, because that's presumably where the expression piping hot actually comes from. Makes I sense. mean, these yeah. systems are quite old, right? Yeah, they, uh, it's post-war, probably. It's just post-war, post-war, but they've really built out the infrastructure now, try to get people, you know, give them alternative to having their own little coal furnaces at home. It's like, well, I mean, dare you we your say, to the municipal system. Dare we say, it might have been communism's one half decent idea. I mean, it is uh, uh, potentially a lot more environmentally friendly because I mean, the it's massively w- efficient. Doing it this way is, is fascinating. The, the to me. heat loss is minimal, especially yeah. when you consider like the the scale of these uh, construction, uh, and the heat can be produced by say incinerating waste. So it's like not only that you're getting rid yeah. of trash, but you're also creating heat and. Uh, creating a fully uh, integrated, uh, you know, system. Yeah, exactly. That would be amazing. Like if you had, all the trash was burned to heat water that was uh, distributed underground with minimal, um, you know, waste and. Uh, and in a CO2. lot of cities, they get this heat from uh, power plants, which you know might produce power plants, uh, might produce heat one way or another. Sometimes less environmentally friendly, sometimes more. But any excess heat is used to heat up the water for this infrastructure, which means a little less energy is being wasted. Yeah, so this is a city decision, as I said, for everything connected to the city network. For those of you listening who live in a building that, for whatever reason, is not on the city network, maybe a very old or a very new building, it's basically a decision of the, uh, it's called the spugelnia, you know, the, 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 the management structure of that building. But usually, they're all kind of synchronized. More or less, they come on at the same time. Because when it's cold, it's cold. You know, older people, people with kids, they don't want to have, you know, 
three or five, seven consecutive days of, of chilly temperatures. What kind of emissions does the actual plant itself spit out? I mean, I think it's just pure steam. What else could it be, right? Oh, well, um, I think they, they incinerate trash there, plus... I th- no, the trash is someplace uh, else. That's another one? Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a new facility out by the new bridge that we mentioned earlier across the... On the oh, on okay. The that's, that's a totally different facility. It's a very facility. specific question. I apologize. But yeah, you can, you know, <laughs> you, can see the, you can see what I'm talking about. There's two towers. You can see them from all over the city. You can, there's a permanent steam cloud above them. So that's what's going on there. No nuclear... People always think it's a nuclear power plant. Nuclear power plants have to be a good distance away from population centers, I, I imagine, yeah? Anybody? Well... Josh? No? Come I mean, on. Well, well, as the resident need. nuclear expert, uh, yeah. um, there is generally a thing that you don't have, uh, you don't build nuclear plants too close to... Yeah, they'd be uh, there's no need. It. It's uh, connected to a grid. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. You know. Yeah, yeah. Moving on, leaving uh, heating and power behind us. Ooh, a different kind of power. See what I did here? Ooh. Political power. Uh, guys, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of hot air here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> um, Peace uh, kind of put their platform together formally. They kind of wrote things out this week so we know exactly the, what, what, what they're running on. It's called a manifesto, John. A manifesto. Yeah, that's the word. Sorry, that's yeah. the word. Platform is probably not really appropriate for them. Yeah, <laughs> they put their platform together. So, guys, take us through. It's a, there's a lot of cliches. It's a lot of standard political cliches here, Dave. Well, we haven't read what's it, in yet? it though. So, uh, it's but we know what's in it. We, we got the bullet point yeah. version. We got the bullet point version. Uh, don't ever throw a story like this over to me, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's here. Uh, well, the thing is, the bullet point version that they've released and they've talked about is is so politically, uh, it's like nothing that there. That they're for good things and against bad things. Yeah, it's like dying is bad, living is good, you know, healthy kids are good, cancer babies not good. Yeah. Uh, War bad, peace good. Okay. But they basically You're rolling out your Andy baby platform, didn't you? More bring, unicorns. You got to bring that up again, huh? <laughs> Uh, so there's nothing really, there's no controversial stuff. I wouldn't say it's not- too substantial. I mean, it's, it's basically things they've been talking about all the time. It's like increasing defense spending and tying their, uh, uh, making their relationship with the United States stronger, making Poland's political, say, swagger in Europe more substantial. Yeah, uh, more yeah I love that paragraph, by the way. Yeah, yeah, no. For, uh, formally, uh, you know, making the EU relationship stronger while telling them basically to go and, you know. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, yeah, it was quite funny. Uh, and what what I'd like to say about this is that we are going to do a bit of a, a dive into the manifesto. Uh, we're going to try and you know get to the bottom of the important parts, which is the budgetary lines, the plans for what they're going to spend on these mad social programs they've been floating, uh, like the minimum wage rise we discussed last week. I feel that's worth talking about again. Any updates on that uh, that anyone wants to contribute? Because th- this seems to me like you know just a huge move that they made. And if this is in this document spelled out, we got to uh, we got to get some details. I'm not sure they get into details they in the talk document. About prosperity. Yeah. Like double bit. And, well, nobody's ready yet. Yeah, welfare like, oh, state. 190 pages, and they just released it. And I'm not. I'm not going to read 200 pages of this crap. No way. <laughs> just melt your brain away. It's a political, you know, crap. That's you do know, you every think, political party puts Do you out. think, Dave? This is something I can throw at you. Yeah, I think. I think. I think you can answer this. Crap. They should be held to account. Do you think, it? Dave, that being boring is kind of a good move here, given that all the left of center parties are talking about gay adoption and uh, well, you know, radical, radical leftist moves? Isn't it, isn't it a good idea to be boring? Well. Last week, we spent 12 to 15 minutes debating how radical Peace's latest policy uh, suggestions were. And I'd be very curious to see if there's any meat on the bone in a 193 page well, manifesto. Got to be something there. That uh, outlines how they'd like to achieve this. Which and is then, why we're going to ask Mikey to read it for us. No, no, we're going to find <laughs> I hate a relevant. You, I hate you all. <laughs> we're going to find a relevant passages, and then he's going to send me the link. Well, and yeah, I'm gonna exactly. Translate it. We're going to find it, meaning somebody besides Dave is going to find it. Mike's going to find the it. fucking link, okay? And then I'm going to translate it, and we're going to have a read. You know, what I'm worried about with this, that's going to be worded in such a way that yeah. it's, it's like the Bible. It can go back to any chapter or verse and paragraph and uh, present it in a way that, you know, backs up your argument or well, something Well, I'm very like curious to, to see how to word it because, look, let's be clear on one thing. Manifestos should not be unimportant uh, propaganda documents. They should be clear programs for government upon which the mandate is built. And that's how parliamentary policy is supposed to work. And uh, we, we, we throw away the uh, the culture of manifesto at our peril. Okay, enough about national politics. Maybe yeah, well, the next three or four weeks as we head into the elections, plenty of opportunities to talk about politics. So we'll leave that behind us for now let's go to a story that kind of it kind of broke about three weeks ago and we didn't cover it at the time but it's back in the news this week so we'll kind of backtrack and uh it started with uh, american airlines 
an announcement they made again about three weeks ago. They started a direct connection to Krakow. I think from Chicago. I think Chicago to Krakow. Chicago Krakow. Yeah, and they said it was going to be six days a week, which Lutz previously was just flying two days a week after not flying at all for years, and they upped it up to three times a week. And now because of this competition, they've upped it to five times a week. So you'll have what is that? Eleven flights a week out of Krakow and out to Chicago. Whereas, whereas I don't know, six months ago we had zero, or a yeah, year ago we had zero. So really suddenly there's tons. Lutz has also said they're going to be flying to New York. Or York now. Yeah, that JFK, was uh, just this just week, actually. Ago, that. Delhi, a few other But here's the thing. As part of the announcement, the original announcement, it was uh, Krakow was one of, I don't know, five or seven destinations. And they had, you know, for marketing purposes, a kind of a, a, a kind of a lame, uh, cheeky little, you know, go to Italy and have some pasta, you know, go go to Ireland and, and have a Guinness, and go. And actually, they didn't say that; I just made that one up. But uh, kiss the Blimey would, Stone, or but they, yeah, yeah kiss the Blimey Stone. We wouldn't care anyway. And. The controversial thing, I put controversial in quotation marks because I don't think it's very controversial. They said, go to Poland and have some vodka. Have a vodka, have a vodka with a friend. Yeah, and people here, friend, yeah. some people here got offended because it portrays Poland as, you know, alcoholics oh, and whatnot. Oh, shit, Poland. Come on. Uh, you know what? Is it a big they deal? should reroute the flights to Ireland. We should be soaking up all that good American tourism. Yeah, and let me just... Have a few Guinness. And let me just say this. I was in a vodka bar last night and everyone in there was drinking vodka. Yeah. Imagine that. In <laughs> Poland. Imagine that. What a cliche. Well, it's back in the news just yesterday by coincidence, uh, American Airlines formally apologized. It was insensitive. Sorry if they offended anybody. The usual kind of pro forma apology. They pointed apology. out we also have craft beer and hipsters here as well. Don't worry if you want a... You, you can know, get drunk on something else here. If yeah. you want an Aerophone, Cappuccino, Mike, we as have our, uh, as our token Polish guy, are you offended at the suggestion that Poles are, are drunks? Not really, but I actually, this is there's another way to look at this, and it has to do with the fact that Poland has a bit of a branding problem. When you go to the States, I think, John, you can kind of vouch for this. When people hear about Poland, nothing really comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, like and the Pope. Maybe, maybe, not even that, maybe 10, 20 years ago now, yeah. I'm not even sure about that. Yeah, you're right. And they might just think about Poland if they hear Eastern Europe, then kind of vodka is one thing they might think about. They might think about pierogi, and that's it. So, you know, they could have, like, instead of vodka, said pierogi, but I think Poland has a branding problem because a lot of other countries have kind of like these Can I tell you what memes. I knew about Poland when I, got to, when I got to Poland? Pretty much that whenever you watch uh, a football match with Poland, it was kind of funny because of all the you know names ending in the same you know. Well, I was, I was unpronounceables. Remember chat, chatting with an American guy online in one of these music forums, and um, and I happened to mention that I lived in Poland. He goes, "Oh yeah, yeah, I lived in Oregon for a while." <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, you're right in a way. It's the, yeah, people know Poland through World War Two. Right? Joke that's, is Portland, that, if you yeah. don't know. If people. they know it all, but like if you think yeah. when you go to the states and ask people about certain countries, you know, if they you talk about the UK or England, you'll think like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Westminster, Big Ben, the Queen. They think Bowler about hats Ireland. and umbrellas. Uh, they'll think about yeah Guinness. They'll think about the. Well, Hold on a second, but that's Irish. Yeah. What did I say? Guinness. 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 You gave yeah, that yeah. to the Brits there. Okay, you no, mean, but I said you I meant to say, you meant to say oh, warm, okay. Okay. warm okay. beer that nobody I was likes. And then like Scotland, Loch Ness, France, the, uh, you have Paris. Yeah. And the I, I agree, Dr. Mike, I, on the branding Poland problem. Just, I agree that there, there's a branding problem, but I also think there's a hypersensitivity problem here as well. Yeah, yeah because it, of the branding problem. Paul's like just looking for an excuse to be indignant about how they're treated. Exactly. And the thing is, there's no way to fix this overnight. They're like trying to invest money in PR firms in the U.S., but this is something... Well, that's that a disaster too, isn't it? Yeah. Is, yeah. It, it takes decades to... Uh, busty farm girls in traditional costumes. It's changing all the time. Uh, well, look, Americans are, are very far away, so you know they have to spend quite a bit of money to get here. Well, but, so, can I just make my Yeah, point? go ahead. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yes, if you have to talk, go ahead. No, um, okay, no. In can that I case, just say I'm going to interrupt you now. You do it all the time to me. So, okay. these are flights to Chicago. This is Polonia. These are not just your standard tourists. We, you know, this is servicing um, I'm po- to Polish make a broader, family connections. So, to make a broader this point. is not a standard tourist connection. It's like a ski holiday. Yeah. When is. the wall came down. In the 90s, people were fascinated by Eastern Europe or whatever, as they saw, you know, before, you know, and they have slowly traveled here because of Ryanair and low cost airlines. And that means that they've discovered that Poland is this wonderful country, full of culture, full of art, full of history, full of beautiful churches and buildings and beautiful countryside and ski and resorts. And slowly people have learned these things about a country that was hidden away from the world for 70 years. That was the issue. You know, it doesn't have a branding problem. It has a catching up with the branding that everyone else has. Well, that's, you know, that's true when you're talking about European markets. But in the US, you know, Ryanair didn't fly to Krakow. This is American Airlines trying to get somebody else besides Polonia to fly over to Poland. 
Poland, you know, to fill up these planes. And they just, when they decide, okay, now we have to mention something about Poland, so you know, people get interested. Uh, what do you know about Poland? Uh, uh, vodka. Yeah. And that's it. Sounds like hey, that's how come they on, kibasa as well. Yeah. Well, this I think this is it, well, this is Polonia first. There are increasing number of business connections, obviously, as well as that's you know, what I was going to say. Actually, world class grow. companies, yeah. that type of thing. But I can so. tell you for sure. I don't think this applies so much to the Irish and the British, but the vast majority of American tourists who do come here come here as part of a larger package tour around yeah. this region, around Europe. They don't come from America to Poland and back to America necessarily. Not all of them. A small percentage, I think. But yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're going to wrap things up with uh, tragic, really sad, uh, but uh, very important news this week. You may have heard, guys, the big news, uh, hot dogs at Ikea doubling in price. What? Yes. I'll tell you something. We covered the Ikea uh, scandal. You remember the, 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 the worker who got fired oh, for yeah. coming on the thing? Yeah. And we said, I said at the time that someday Ikea would have its revenge on Poland. And even though this is uh, happening all over the world and this is clearly not that, I was right. From one zwali to two. <laughs> oh, my Mike. God. It's I know, I know, tragedy. I know. How many times have you been there after you check out and you see people literally Literally with three or four hot dogs in each hand. I've never eaten a hot dog in my life. They're disgusting. You've never eaten. Uh, no, I've eaten one. Like, and I thought it was disgusting. Wait, wait, wait. Like, you've had actual, one. You've had one hot dog in your life. The actual Frankfurt or sausage itself. You've is had disgusting. one hot dog in your life. Well, at Irish barbecues, you can get a, a hot dog bun with a real sausage in it. You know, so if you call that a hot dog, I've had plenty of hot dogs. Are you going to say that your typical sausage is much better in terms of quality than a typical hot dog? Yeah, typical hot dog. Maybe in disgusting. Ireland, okay. Maybe you got a proper sausage, but. I think they're the same. Do you know where like I tried? Do you know where I tried a hot dog, hot John? Dogs. New York, and it was disgusting. Mm. But like, went from one of those uh, st- street. You say cars that like it's yeah, my fault. One of those street cars. That's like famous hot dog country. I mean, it's supposed to not get any better than that. It was horrible. One hot dog. That's just Tasted like wait. Shag. So your whole life in Ireland, growing up, you never had a hot dog. People don't eat hot dogs in Ireland. We're Irish, John. You know, we don't go to baseball games either. Wow. We don't play baseball, baseball here Bell either, but hot dogs are an institution you know, here. So come on, Fresh what are you Prince of Bel Air. That's how we experience oh, American Christ culture. Sake, load of shit Uncle that Phil, is. you're so stuck up. Uh, uh, I, okay, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Dr. Mike, please talk some sense here. I think hot dogs are perfectly all right. They're bad hot dogs. They're good hot dogs. But like when you're talking about hot dogs and you're talking specifically about the sausage, that's like an ext- it's like Frankfurters, Wieners. There's like a billion kinds. Sometimes they're cheap, shitty meat put together. Sometimes they're you no know, high grade beef or pork. So it really depends. But yeah, you, if you had a bad experience from one of those carts in New York, that is kind of a downer because th- that's supposed to be like the quintessential dog. I mean, I've had them in Chicago from there. <laughs> it's not like the bread either. It's like that packagey kind of uh, like air bread, crap bread yeah. you get. Yeah, that, that is. Some places are better. Some that's an American worse. thing, I think. Having this bread that has nothing to it, really, it's just there. Yeah, is that, that in New York? I thought, you know, I'll try one. Yeah. I'll there try is one. the uh, there is the hot dog horror story, isn't there, about finding a vein in it? And, uh... Do you know what the best thing about New York when I first got there? I was walking down Lexington Avenue, and it is. I wasn't even listening. I don't know what, what joke he just tried to make there. I'm walking down Lexington Avenue. It is scarred. amazing the height of the buildings. Like, have you never seen it? Okay, and we're not talking about buildings. And I'm a taking this show. in, right? And yeah. you know what? I look okay. up. It's middle of July. And the steam starts coming out of the grates, you know, like in the movies. And I was like, oh.